Good morning. Welcome to this talk. This talk is about Angular and performance. And I am Manfred. I'm a trainer and consultant. And of course, I'm doing Angular. And first of all, I want to start with a picture. Who knows this machine? Yeah, some of you. It's a 386, the hero of my childhood. And this 386 had a very nice feature, namely this turbo button. Nice thing. When you pressed it, the machine was about twice as fast as before. Okay, to be honest, the original reason of it was to, ma to make the machine slower, to be more compatible with older versions of the machine. But anyway, the question arises if there is something like this in the area of Angular, if there are some quick win solutions for Angular and performance. And it turns out, yes, there is. For instance, of course, you can do bundling or you can do minification, or you can put Angular into production mode. And the good message is the CLI is doing this all for you. So you don't have to concentrate on this. You just have to tell the CLI to do a production build, and then everything happens automatically. But in addition to that, there is a problem with the beamer. OK. It's okay? Yeah, we are back. Great. In addition to that, there are other topics we can cover to improve the performance of the application. And this is what this talk is about. For instance, we can do lazy loading to improve startup performance, or we can use the optimization technique on Bush to improve data binding performance. We can do AOT and tree shaking. And I will also talk about some new and upcoming stuff. In addition to that, we can also leverage progressive web apps and service worker caching. But uh, there are other sessions about this topic today. There are two sessions about this topic, and that's why I will just reference to them. OK, so let's start with the first performance topic. Let's start about lazy loading. A good friend of mine told me that I'm very authentic when I'm talking about lazy things. I don't know what he meant, but I think it was some kind of compliment. Anyway, uh, what you see here is the typical structure of an Angular application. You have several models. For instance, there is this root model, normally called app model. There are feature models, and there are shared models, one or several. And normally, Everything is started at once when you load the application into the browser. And this is exactly where lazy loading comes in. With lazy loading, you just have to load one module. And then when the user clicks here or there, the application loads other modules just on demand. And as you can imagine, this will improve the startup performance of the application. What does it take to get started with lazy loading? All it takes is a special route like this, a special route that points to the lazy model using load children. And this load children is just a string. It takes the name of the file with the lazy model, a hash, and then the name of the model class. In my case, the name of the model class is flight booking, as well as the name of the file. Perhaps you are wondering which root gets activated when we route to a lazy module. And the answer is each module, and so also a lazy module, can have a routing configuration of its own, a routing configuration like this one. And of course, when you are routing to a lazy module, the default route of this model is activated. In this case, it's the route with the empty bath that points to my flight booking component. I've prepared an example for this. And to save some time, I have created a video. And this video shows how lazy loading works. So in this demonstration, I'm just loading a site. Uh, single page application and as you see in the bottom a lot of bundles are loaded and when I click to flight booking the bundle for this very menu item is loaded just on demand 
So because of this, we had a better startup performance because we postponed the loading procedure of some models within the execution of the application. Okay, so I think this is a very easy way to improve the startup performance. Let's talk about another feature that helps us to improve the performance. Let's talk about the optimization technique on Bush. So let me know who has used on Bush so far. Oh, great, great, about a third, I would say. Okay, so to explain on Bush, let me start with a demonstration. Here I have a flight booking application. I can search for flights and then I can delay the first flight by pressing this delay button. And you see when you look at the first flight, we are switching from 9.41 to 9.56 and we are switching from 9.56 to 10.11 and so on. But this delay button is just postponing the first flight. When we are looking at the other flights, for instance, at the second flight, then we see that the second flight sticks with its time with 11.26 and also the third flight sticks with its time with 14.26. Perhaps you've noticed this blink effect. This isn't about animations because I'm just the wrong guy for talking about animations. I'm not talented when it comes to such things. But here I'm using a dirty trick, a dirty trick to visualize the change detector of Angular. Every time such a flight card blinks, the change detector of Angular is checking this flight card, this very component for changes. And as you see here, even though we are just changing the first flight, Angular is checking all the flights. Normally, this isn't a problem at all because Angular is very fast when it comes to change detection. You can bind thousands of data items without performance issues because of the underlying architecture. But sometimes this might lead to performance issues, especially when you have both a lot of bounce data and a lot of events that are triggering change detection. And in this case, you can leverage on Bush. You can put on this on Bush mode for specific components. For instance, here I have put on on Bush for my flat card components. And this means that Angular isn't checking these components, but Angular is just checking them when we notify Angular about a change there. That means we have to push the change down to Angular. Angular isn't pulling the changes. We have to notify Angular and there are several ways to do this. For instance, we can just change a bound input, an input property. And this isn't as simple as it seems because in on push mode, Angular just checks whether all objects has changed. Angular just checks the object references. Angular isn't checking whether the first property changed, whether the second property changed, or the hundredth property changed. No, Angular is just checking the object reference. Of course, this is because we want to have the best performance. So this is more or less what Angular is doing internally. And because of this, we have to exchange the whole object with a new one, consisting the new updated property values. We can also raise an event within a component and we can notify a bound observable. You know, you can bind observables by the means of the async bind. And of course, you can trigger change detection manually, but please don't try this at home. Most of the time you can get around with the first three points. I think it is always a code smell when you have to do change detection manually. Of course, there are some edge cases where you need it, but in generally, I would uh, try to avoid it. To activate on Bush, just set this property here on component level to on Bush. Okay, let us have a look to the demonstration. In my demonstration, I'm lucky because every time my first flight is delayed, I'm creating a new flight object with the updated state. And so I can easily switch to on Bush here. 
Let's reload the application. I'm searching for flights and then I'm delaying the first flight and now you see Angular is just checking this one and only component that was changed. Nice thing. Okay, let's switch to the third topic I want to talk about today. And this is a topic that gets improved on a regular basis. It's about ahead of time. So perhaps you know Angular is compiling your HTML templates and other stuff to JavaScript to improve the performance of the application. And for this there are two approaches. You can do this at runtime. This is normally done when you are doing debugging and that's called just-in-time compilation. And you can do this ahead of time, which means, means you are doing this during the build. And of course, ahead of time brings a lot of advantages when it comes to performance. An obvious advantage is you get a better startup performance because Angular doesn't need to compile at startup time at runtime. But there are also some not that obvious advantages. For instance, you end up with smaller bundles because you don't need to include the Angular compiler into your bundles. You don't need the JIT compiler at all at runtime. And tools can easier analyze the code. For instance, tools can hunt down unnecessary parts of frameworks and those tools can remove those parts of the frameworks. I'm sure every one of us is using frameworks and no one of us is using all the parts, all the features of those frameworks and with this feature that is called tree shaking, we can remove those parts. Tree shaking is a nice metaphor for just shaking the source tree and making all the loose branches fall down. And once again, the good message is the Angular CLI is doing this all for you. You just need to do a production build and then the Angular CLI takes care. This is especially a nice thing because when I talked about this topic, let's say one year or one and a half year ago, I had to explain everyone how to set up the Angular compiler and how to integrate the Angular compiler in their build chains, for instance, into their GALP process, into their GALP process, into Webpack and so on. Nowadays, we can just leverage the CLI. Under the hoods, the Angular CLI is using this plugin, the Angular compiler plugin that lives in the NPM package ng-tools Webpack. And you can use this plugin even without the CLI when you have just an ordinary Webpack build. What you see here is a statistics from my example application. Here I'm not using AOD and as you see at the bottom, this takes me about three seconds to start the application. And with AOD, I can cut it to the half. And that's why the Angular team wants to encourage you all to use AOD. And that's also why at Google, only AOD is permitted. They aren't allowed to do something but AOD. So when it comes to tree shaking, there is another nice thing uh, that just sneaked into the CLI. It's the so-called Angular Build Optimizer. And this Angular Build Optimizer is rewriting your bundles to make them more tree shakeable. Here we see a statistic I'm taking from a sample application. And with the Build Optimizer, I've managed to cut the bundle size to the half. Okay, you always have to look at the very example. Here in this example, I'm using Angular Material. You know Angular Material is a huge library, but I'm just um, including some elements of Angular Material. And because of tree shaking and because of the Angular Build Optimizer, a lot of stuff from Angular Material is thrown out by the means of tree shaking. The best thing about this is the Build optimizer is default since Angular CLI 1.5. That means you just need to lean back and wait for newer Angular CLI versions. 1.5 is around for 
quite a time and you automatically get a better performance, you automatically get better bundle sizes. One thing that you might experience when doing AOT is that the AOD compiler is more strict than the JIT compiler. And that's why you might see more error messages when you are doing AOD. Error messages like this one. And that might be annoying because you don't see those error messages during debugging and programming. You just get them when you are doing a production build. And to prevent this issue, there are two solutions I want to talk about. For instance, there is the Angular language service provided by the Angular team. It comes in the form of plugins for different IDEs. And this language service gives you a lot of information the AOD compiler gives you too, but during the development, during typing in stuff in your IDE. And then there is another thing available since Angular 5. You can now use AOD for debugging. You can AOD can use AOD in dev mode. They have done an amazing work and they have invested a lot of time into incremental AOD. That means that you can just start your uh, web development server with ng-surf dash dash AOD and you get the same strict error messages you would get when you are just building with AOD uh, later on. The first recompilation takes a bit, but then it is quite fast. I want to encourage you and also the Angular team wants to encourage you to try this out. And further improvements are coming. For instance, yesterday at another conference at the other side of the big band, uh, the lead of the Angular team, Brad Green, talked about the new AOD compiler they are working on. And this new AOD compiler is creating better code that is more tree shakeable. And the best thing about this is this doesn't mean breaking changes because they are just changing how the compiler works underneath the covers. And there is a nice saying from Rob Wormald, a nice site. Rob Wormald is an Angular developer advocate at the Angular team. He says that early numbers are extremely promising in terms of code size. They don't show numbers at this early stage of the development, but I think this is quite promising what we see and hear here. Okay, when you want to read more about this stuff, when you want to, to know all these tiny things, these knobs you can do, uh, push these buttons you can to push to get a better performance, check out my Medium account. Here I have a series, a blog article series about, about all the stuff I've talked today. Let me come to a conclusion. We have seen that lazy loading is a simple thing to immediately improve the startup performance of your application. And we have seen that we can leverage on push to improve the data binding performance. We have also seen that AOT and tree shaking helps us to get more performance. We can cut the start up time to the half and we can also cut the bundle sizes. And we have also seen that there are quick wins. Just think about this turbo button of the 386. We can leverage the CLI to get a good configuration for high performance applications and we can try out AOD for debugging to see all these errors when we are doing uh, debugging. And the best message is just land back and wait for the next versions because with each new version of Angular, the performance is increasing because they are optimizing underneath the covers. Okay, so much for this. Thanks for having me. Here you have my contact data. Of course, you will find all my presentation slides and my samples at my blog. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out at Twitter or feel free to, uh, to uh, talk with me here at the conference. So thanks for coming and have a nice conference.